Hi guys, welcome to this powerful video with Apostle Michael Robo. This particular video was carefully selected and edited to improve your knowledge on spiritual things and draw you closer to God. Don't forget to like this video, share with loved ones and family, and subscribe. Stay tuned. You will go and climb a tree. Anywhere you see smoke coming from, go there. You will easily fetch fire. One is easy, one is hard. If you want to go the route of reading, keep reading. You may find certain things at old age, but some of us know that through exhortation, we connect to the spirit of reality. And so if I find anybody that has a dimension, I don't waste my time. I don't waste my time. I don't waste my time. I go there and ferociously, I take it. I take it. When I was learning the doctrine of eternal life, I had to search a man that had it. And I heard of Andrew Womack. This guy raises the dead like Chai's play. Why? Because he has caught something about eternal life. And I sat there. I read and listened to this man. I heard messages from morning till night. And the point came. The same name of Jesus that I quote. I said it and the results were worlds apart. I showed up in a meeting. I said in the name of Jesus, three people came out. That growth had dematerialized. What? I didn't even have faith for it. But I connected to a man that had life. And life was already flowing through me. What do you mean? Growth has left you. What happened? How did it happen? Are you sure? I said, no, take them out. Maybe the emotion here is high. They are being sensational. I told the keyboard, stop playing. I want to be sure what is happening. The lady said, I had three growths in my breast. It's gone. What? I thought with a bullet. A bullet. And the, the bullet was there. They removed two. It was remaining one. And she said the matter had dematerialized. Even me, I know I don't have faith to command matters to dematerialize. But I had connected to somebody that carried life. So when Paul said exhortation, he knows what he's talking about. There is a dimension of the world you will never touch until you go to them that have and buy. That's why I say buy the truth, sell it not. You will pay the price. There are certain men you will buy their messages. To hear what you have read from the Bible. There are certain men you will travel for hours, for days to sit down and listen to. Not because you have not read it. You have read the Bible cover to cover. But you yourself, when you hear them, when they open those things, you will know that these are custodians. These are custodians. You will know that these ones are custodians. And then number three is that doctrine. You want to grow in the world? You must labor in doctrine. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17, it said, The elders that are rule well, it said, They are worthy of double honor, especially they that labor in the world and doctrine. The reason is because doctrine is hard, it's another level. Reading may be fun, exhortation may be easy. Doctrine is labor. And for you to be accurate in your word with God, you must know doctrine. Because doctrine becomes the foundation of spiritual accuracy. Spiritual accuracy is not that you met Jesus in the spirit. Any being can appear like Christ. Any being can appear like the angel of light. The only way you can be accurate in the spirit is when doctrine has been ironed out. This is where the labor of the world comes in. And the reason many people are porous is because they never hear doctrine. Hear me. When you do exhortation, you connect to the spirit of that dimension. But it will take doctrine for you to gather truths and compartmentalize them until you are accurate. You may carry, you want to study on love and you will search the word love from Genesis to Revelation. When you read it and analyze it, you will know that it takes labor to do doctrine. It takes enormous labor. The word of God is not joke. It's not something you just hear and enjoy. Sometimes you are searching the word, you are sweating. It was Kenneth Hagin's son that told the story that he will go to school in the morning, they wake up, they meet their father. Five different Bible versions are open and he's reading them. And they will go to school, come back in the evening, the man is still there searching scripture. He wants to know what God said about faith and he's checking every word that was spoken about faith, trying to put it in context to understand this faith mentioned here, what was he referring to? Why was he mentioned? How can it be applied? This one mentioned here and he's laboring sometimes for two weeks. He will only stand up from there to either eat or to ease himself. 
It's called doctrine. If a generation does not labor like that, we will err. The reason as by is porous is because they are gifted men, but doctrine is lacking. When you come into this city at night, you dare not go out. My assistant went down yesterday just to get something, and he saw as though bosses brought ladies. And almost everyone was naked. Why? Because when they come to church, they only hear about prosperity. They have not heard about the power that purifies. They have not heard about the judgment that is to come. So there is a deficiency in truth. And when we come to church and all we do is clap and dance, then a generation will be lost. Because when you meet these ladies and ask of their names, it will be Martha, Mary, Magdalene. You will never hear a name that is not a Christian name. Where did they come from? They came from the churches. But we have not led God in doctrine to show them the perspectives of Abba. Every day we come to church, we prophesy prosperity from January to December. And the souls of men are dying. Immorality on the high scale. And nobody can tell restore because our messages can't pierce their heart. Can't pierce their heart. It will take doctrine for people to understand the vengeance of God. They can balance between grace and judgment. They can balance between grace and obedience. They can balance between grace and sanctification. Because the grace that came to save is the same grace that preaches us that denying ungodly lust we should live so badly in this world. How come we know the grace that forgives and we don't know the grace that empowers men to live above iniquity? Because there's a deficiency in doctrine. We teach prosperity and prosperity is materiality. What kind of prosperity is that? That impacts only your circumstance and does not impact your soul. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? He said, I wish above all things that thou mightest prosper and be in hell, even as your soul prospered. You are not prospering because you have a car. You are prospering because you are knowing God more. This is why the benchmark for prosperity is the degree to which you know God. You are not permitted to have more money than you know Jesus. If you have more money than you know Jesus, that money will become your God. But error will continue unless the carpenters that know the foundation of doctrines begin to appear on the scene. There's a deficiency. Who told you power is about healing the sick alone? Who told you power is about people falling under the anointing? Who taught us that garbage? The first realm of power is the ability to tame the flesh. He said, I beat my body. I bring it under subjection. He said, you shall receive power and you shall be called the sons of God. The first power you receive, he made you to become. He said, as many as received that power, he gave them the authority to become the sons of God. You, are, you talk about power and you are a slave of immorality. You are a slave of lying. You are a slave of fornication. Who told you you know power? He said, the prince of this world come to me and find that nothing. The first realm of power is the power that tames the flesh. I can bring my body under subjection. And because I can rule over my body, I can rule over my circumstances. But when there is no doctrine, men that are just excited will say rubbish. And everything about power in our generation is people falling down. They fall down, they go back, and they are the same way they are. Listen, we are not Christians. It's the people of the world that called us Christians. Find out what the Bible calls us. It called us believers. It called us witnesses. It called us saviors. When I come into a Sabbath and you look at my life, you should be able to tell what humility is. When you look at my life, you should be able to tell what purity is. When you look at my life, you should be able to tell what a God man is. We are the reflectors of God to our generation. That's why I say you are the light of the world. A city set upon the hill that cannot be hid. What is the dimension you represent? It will take accurate doctrine for it to happen. Is your governor a Muslim? You see, our problem is Islam. Is your governor a Muslim? How come there is corruption in your land? How come salaries are not being paid? How come affliction and atrocities are happening? Didn't they go to church? Where did they come from? Were they taught by the Hindu gods? Are they not part of us? But why they were rising? They only taught them how to succeed. And their focus was maligned. They thought success is influence and power, cars and vehicles. They never knew that success is where you are standing in the company of the immortals. When, they, when the realms are open, where are you standing? Isaiah 
thought it was about God of knowledge when he appeared in the realms beyond the crystal. He said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord and his train filled the temple. Suddenly a national prophet said, woe unto me. I succeeded on earth. I was popular. I was influential. But when the crystals were open and my reality was revealed, I saw that I was wretched. Because if I have no power in that realm, everything on earth is an impression. It's caricature. People are looking for impartation. They just come, so you lay hands on them, they'll go and raise the dead. You are joking. People want you to just lay hands on them and then they go and they open blind eyes. Who told you it works like that? The weight of your power is consistent with the weight of your consecration. And one of the ways to verify consecration is the depth to which you are addicted to the word of God. I went for a, for a conference in Lagos. We were told Apostle Randy Clark was coming. And when I went, I made sure I violated every protocol. <laughs> Thank God for, for protocol officers. You people are trying. You are lucky I didn't come for your meeting. Tell me somebody is here that carries something and I come and you stand. Reverend Umar Akbar came for crusade in Benue some years ago. And over 14, there were over 30 protocol officers. They blocked the road that nobody will touch him. I looked at them and laughed. I said, this you don't know the hunger I have. <laughs> when they finished blocking, when Reverend Omar Akbar finished and he wanted to go, where I came from, even the protocol guys knows that as the wind blow it. <laughs> and thou listest not from whence it cometh or where it goeth. So are they that are born. I trusted through them and grabbed the man and took something. I went for the class meeting. I violated every protocol until I knelt before him and he laid hands on me. He said, you will walk in the glory realm of the anointing. When I left there, I said, my ministry has started. I started organizing how we will start traveling around and praying for the sick. And to my greatest dismay, the first two weeks, everybody I prayed for was healed. Cancer, hepatitis, strange cases. People were just being healed. I said, what? This is the season for international ministry. We have waited, it has come. Now is the time. After two weeks, the anointing vaporized. That was when I realized what Paul told Timothy. Fan to flame the gift of God that is in thee. I now realize there is a revelation that that anointing rests on. And I didn't have that anointing. I didn't have that revelation. So even though the impartation was legit, there was no light to sustain it. After two weeks, the anointing vanished. And when I realized it, I started pursuing consecrations. I know when I touch that consecration, even if that man is not in my ecosystem, through the word, I will meet him in the spirit. That's why I told you yesterday that the word are doorways. They are doorways, sir. If you meet the consecration requirement, the person that carries that grace, even if he has died, he will come back from the dead. That's why we meet men in the spirit. Because there are certain mantles that you can't return with. You enter a depth of meditation on the word, you sit on the word, you eat it. When your consecration is attained, you will discover you may be sleeping and God will carry you through your dream. And you will meet the man that carries that dimension. He will put it on you and there is no stopping it. I have met men in the spirit that have died many years ago, but they are not dead. Because in the spirit, they are spirit of just men made perfect. And there are certain graces that they should give to people on earth. But there is no consecration. So God will wait. That's why sometimes you come for a meeting. You are waiting for an anointing to open blind eyes. When they impact you, only hunger is what you go with. Because God gives you that hunger to go and attain that consecration requirement. When that requirement is met, the same preacher that impacted you will come back and meet you when you are fasting. And then you will know that impartations don't only happen in the conference. The man will lay hand on you, the grace will not rest. You will go with hunger. When you meet the consecration requirement, the man will be sleeping in his house. God will come and carry him. And take his spirit to meet you where you are. Because see, whether he likes it or not, your consecration has called for his dimension. And there is no stopping it. He can't stop it. 
He may not want to. Hope you know Elijah didn't want to give it to Elisha. He said, you have asked a hard thing. What do you mean hard thing? I have paid the price for this grace. I have attained the impartation, the consecration level. When Elisha was going to heaven with it, the heavenly entourage that came to carry him, they hit the mantle down. They hit it down from his hand. It was the whirlwind that dropped the mantle. Elijah never dropped it. And even Elisha carried his own to the grave. Because they don't give these things. We take them. If you are thinking they will give it to you, you are a joker. We, they don't give it. We take it. We take it. We take it. Do you know how many mantles men have gone back to the Lord with? And so some of them, they take it and God will not allow them bring it into heaven. He will keep it at the gate of heaven. In Psalms of Solomon chapter 4 verse 4, he said the ear of David is like a tower. He said there are the shields of many warriors. They refuse to give it in time. God will let them enter heaven with it. And so when your consecration level is attained, those mantles will fall on you. They will fall. And people will look at you, they will know that this thing happening to you is ancient. We have seen it in the life of Charles Finney. We have seen it in the life of John Wesley. How come he came to Africa? Because it's not race sensitive. It's consecration sensitive. And I can be in Afghanistan and connect to a mantle that changed the United States. Because it's the man who attends the consecration that picks it. This is why we journey in the world. When you enter, real power will find you. Power will find you. Who told you Bessie the Hosa is dead? Who told you they are dead? The Bible never called them dead. They called them spirit of just men made perfect. And they say, you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, to an innumerable company of angels, to the spirit of just men made perfect. Sometimes you do business with this world so much, these men will ask God to give them permission to come for your meeting. There are things we don't share. Did you not read that when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses and Elijah showed up. There are certain revelations you catch. The men who handled that revelation, they know what they felt like when they were on earth. And when you are going out for that meeting, they tell God, please, we want to go and sense that anointing again. Allow us to attend this meeting. That's why some of the meetings we enter, the things that happen is beyond our faith level. Because you can come for a meeting, you stayed with God for three months. And you hit the realm of intimacy that Enoch hit. When you are coming out, Enoch knows that his dimension will come for that meeting. He will accompany you for that meeting. And men who are sensitive, they will see him. Because they just men, they follow us. There is a weight of tongues you will pray in the spirit. The fire that will literally be on you will activate a light in heaven. He will not be able to sit wherever he is. He will want to come for that meeting to see what will happen. Because even in the spirit, there are evolutions. Graces are moving into different propensities. And the men that handled the mantles before, sometimes they want to come and see their successors and see what they are doing. And when we show up, terrible things happen in righteousness. Because we are not alone. I was going to Kenya and the Lord told me, you are not alone. He said, Gideon is coming with you. I knew when I entered Kenya, I was going to summon warriors. I knew. Because if Gideon is coming, then an army is about to rise. It informed the nature of impartation in that meeting. But it came when I was meditating. Lord, what will you have me say? Kakatoria, Baraka, Takabano, Sadaka. And he said, when you go to Kenya, you will go with Gideon. When I entered Kenya, even the biggest of ministers knew that this guy that came is not a boy. They give you the honor of an ancient because you came with those graces. You came with those mantles. You came with those dimensions. You are not disadvantaged, but you have not taken advantage of the things that are meant for you. The ministry God has sent you to carry. Some of you are continuing what Paul did. That's why when you open the scripture, you have revelation. But the time must come when you will travel in the world to meet Paul. And when you meet him on earth, you become like Paul. You will be as ancient as Paul. When you talk, even the wisest of men cannot dissuade it. They cannot disapprove it. They will know that what you are talking is beyond your age. It's an ancient syllable you are reading from. That's why I told you, when they ask you how old are you, it's a wrong question. The question they should ask is, where have you been to? If I have met Paul and you want to know my age, you need to trace me back to the day Paul was born. Because that was the day that man came to earth. And so I'm walking by an ancient wisdom. These are the things available to us by the world. Quit the drama. Quit the gimmick. 
you can become anything you want to be. Search it in the scripture. To the church, once again. Mantles have been given to the church, once again. For the kings to be born, for the ancients to arise, for the priests to arise, for the ancients to be born. Hallelujah, 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 believed you are mightily blessed. Contained in this message are steps and principles you could apply to your life and get the desired result that is required to take you into the next level of your spiritual journey and walk with God. Once again, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and most importantly, share this video with friends, family and the loved ones. We would love to hear from you. Share your thoughts down below in the comment section. I will see you in our next video.